I mean, when I first saw Sophia's shoes, I was like, oh my God, this is like my goddaughter or something. <laughs> I just love this butterflies, pink, throw everything at it. Dress code was slightly different, so you had to kind of come smart, casual. Um, some of the clubs, you had to actually wear shoes, you couldn't wear trainers. So this was new to us. We were like, mm, shoes, the brand of shoes, Patrick Cox, was on everybody's lips. If you went to garage raves, it was like, no, you got to get your Patrick Cox. You got to have a pair of Patrick Cox on. It's not just, oh, they've got Patrick Cox and they've got them. I'm like, oh, we'd be like, Patrick Cox, Patrick Cox, Patrick Cox, Patrick Cox. Do you know what I mean? It's like that all the way across it. Well, I would say back in the day, it was definitely more of a man shoe. Um, and definitely kind of from that kind of Caribbean background, you know, we, we wore shoes that were hardy, that lasted long. If you had a pair of Patrick Cox, you know, you're about that life. Your Patrick Cox, they set off your outfit. Whatever you're wearing, you got your Cox on the bottom. That's you, you know, say so your thing swagged up. You're nice now, you're that like, man, we'll see if your Patrick Cox wanna be and they'll see you I think my favourite were the pythons, and I used to sit there and just like stroke them like a baddie in a James Bond film. Yeah, you know, I, I remember my, my little brother wanting to come out one night. His friends came round to the house, and they didn't have on the right footwear. I'm like, we like we used up going. You ain't, you can't get in anywhere like that. And one of them having to wear the shoes, and at the end of the night, I literally had to like throw him on the sofa and take them off because he didn't want to give them back. When you've got comfort and style then you end up with sort of six pairs or something like that. <laughs> All the boys would always have trouble getting in places, and that's why right. Patrick Cox were the shoes that they could wear, feel cool in, and get in everywhere. Brothers and they were super trainers. comfortable. Like, oh, you yes. dials comfortable shoes like having cushions on your feet. Um, All of our friends had them, like mm. the whole mob had them. had them. Everyone had them. And you had to have them almost, like, mm. you had to have a pair. You had to save up and have a pair. It was just iconic at the time if you were going to go to garage raids, if you were going to go out, even just on a Thursday night to our local club. To school? Get it. Well, she walked to school, but Sean's extra, so. <laughs> I was doing tele sales selling um, double glazing on the phone to nobody that wanted double glazing. And I was working in Zara in Blue Water as well. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't really have the budget for Patrick Cox, but I used to go upstairs to um, Choice, which was the designer store in Blue Water that sold all the best clothes and I used to stare at them longingly but yeah no I couldn't afford them at the time. First of all it was like hand-me-downs from like cousins, neighbours, whatever. Quite a funny story, a girl that I went to school with, she was cousins with um, Kelly Brook. I remember she come round with a load of clothes and there was a pair of Patrick Cox loafers and I was just like oh my god. So that was my first ever pair. I mean, I was only like 13, 14. I don't really know how I afforded it. I think just like saving up for like birthday money. You only get money if your auntie, your uncle, you put it all together. Getting a pair of Patrick Cox loafers from Choice in Blue Water. Getting on the bus in the 96, it's like an hour journey. I just remember like holding that money in my jacket. Like, oh my, you know, just the excitement. <laughs> I've been following him on Instagram for years and kind of like waiting for something. I think I've messaged him a few times and I don't know why, just like trying to get his attention. I don't think he realised the impact that he had on that scene. His shoes were a key part of that garage look, like the uniform. I felt connected to that scene Indirectly, I wasn't going to those clubs. I was much, much more of a house music guy. But I'd kind of already stopped going to clubs almost by that point for a while. That was really my working years. I mean, if I ever, anyone worked like a nutcase, it was me, 95 to 2002. The thing about Wannabe was it was comfortable. You know, people danced their asses off in those shoes. The exotics and all those sort of things probably came about because I was raised in Nigeria. When my parents moved to Lagos when I was two. In Lagos, the men wearing exotic shoes. They're wearing snakeskin, they're wearing lizard, they're wearing ostrich. And I think that impacted me. I don't know, in some strange way. The whole birth of Wannabe was really 
it was problem solving, which is how I used to approach design. And um, I mean, even the name wannabe, Patrick Cox shoes at the time cost 200 pounds, which was a hell of a lot of money in the mid 90s. So I was trying to think of a second name for the brand. You know, everybody was doing DKNY and CK1 and everybody was giving you just initials and all this sort of stuff. And I thought, well, you're a wannabe. During the middle of us working together, DJ Target came out with his book, Grime Kids. One of the chapters is called Champagne and Patrick Cox. It just started to take over the football terraces and it started to take over the nightclubs. At one point, um, I think it was Arena or The Face magazine, reviewed clubs by the amount of wannabe loafers on the dance floors. You know, if it was like 80%, it was a good club. If it was 10%, don't bother going. First time I saw a pair of Patrick Cox in the flesh was when my sister Claudia had a pair of his jelly shoes that had the Eiffel Tower in the heel. And I remember thinking that they were the coolest shoe I'd ever seen. I mean, when I first saw Sophia's shoes, I was like, oh my God, this is like my goddaughter or something. <laughs> I just love this butterflies, pink, throw everything at it. I was just, just blown away by her stuff. Patrick read in an interview that I did that they were my most favorite pair of shoes of all time. And he actually sent me a pair. So yeah, now I have my own pair. So yeah, <laughs> thank you, Patrick. Her shoes stand out on the shelf. You know, you walk around, you know, the shoe hall at Harrods or Selfridges or something. Ding! <laughs> when you get to her shoes, and I, I love that. I can't remember if Patrick slid into my DMs or if I slid into his, but we became aware that there was a real mutual appreciation there. My favorite reaction as a shoe designer was someone walked in the showroom and he smiled. And hers are the epitome of that. You just, you're almost in on the joke, but there's something very serious about it at the same time. You know, there are elements of kitsch, which I love kitsch. It's not a bad word at all. It's, I, I love that moment of walking the line between good taste and bad taste. When you're wearing something new, it should almost look wrong to the eye for a minute because it's new. And then your eye very quickly adapts to it. If something just looks great from the get-go, that gets boring very quickly. But if something is a bit brighter than what you expected or more patterned or, you know, so if you're throwing three or four things together at the same time on one shoe, I just, I just find that exciting. I really wanted to expand my collection into loafers. Once I'd met Patrick, I just kept thinking like this would be so cool if I did a loafer collaboration with him and really learn from the master. Because normally in collaboration, everyone's arguing, trying to put them themselves in more because everybody's got such big egos, but we were the exact opposite. I was encouraging it to be more her and she was encouraging it to be more me. And then it was just finding us a synergy of how to put the the joy and happiness of what Sophie does with my stuff. It took a while to get to the perfect um, blend. She gets it, she lived it. She talks to me about being an Ayanapa and having my shoes. She was the consumer and now she's grown up and got her own brand when she was a teenager and it, it just all makes sense. You know, I think people, people are smart and they smell a fake story at a second. This is just real. It's just two people who have a love dancing, love night clubbing, who love shoes that met each other and did something fun together. I mean, flowers like took over the world. So yeah, I just had to put some flowers on my uh, Patrick Cox shoes. It was just meant to be, really. <laughs>